In this video we're going to introduce what is a very important probability distribution. It's known as the normal distribution. Here we've got the data from a survey of the masses of 2,000 newborn babies. And it's summarized both in the histogram and in the to table of summary statistics. And we should know what I would like you just to do before you go any further is pause the video and write a brief paragraph describing the major features of this distribution. So if we now produce a relative frequency histogram or our normalized histogram for the data, we do that by simply dividing the frequency densities by 2000 which means now that we've got an a graph, the area under which is equal to 1. What can we notice about this graph? Well, first of all, it's pretty well symmetric around somewhere around about the 3200 mark. And it's got this sort of bell shape to it. These two features are very important are characteristics of a very important probability distribution known as the normal distribution superimposing the normal distribution with a mean of 3141 grams and a standard deviation of 262 grams that is the mean and the standard deviation of the sample of babies that we had in the survey we get a really good fit. So the red curve gives us the normal distribution and the blue bars was our histogram of results of the babies. So if a random variable x can be modeled by the normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma or equivalently variance sigma squared then we say that x is normally distributed with mean mu and variance sigma squared and abbreviate that down to saying that x is n mu comma sigma squared. So in the example that we've just been looking at if m is the gr m grams is the mass of the next baby to be born in a maternity hospital then our earlier work suggests that M can be modelled by the normal distribution with mean 3141 and standard deviation 262 which is equivalent to saying that the variance is 262 squared so we can say that M is normally distributed with mean 3141 and variance 262 squared and we can write that as either saying that x is normal 3141 262 squared or saying that x is normal 3141 68644 because 68644 is the value of 262 squared. Now, unfortunately, the function of the probability density function for the normal curve with mean mu and standard deviation sigma is, is quite complex. There's its formula. You don't need to learn that formula. You'll very rarely need to use it. What we are going to do is we'll have a look though at how the value of mu and the value of sigma affect the shape of the graph that we get. So to begin with we've got mu equals naught and now I'm just changing the mean value, the value of mu. And you can see that increasing the value of mu just moves the distribution across to the right but has no effect on the standard deviation. If I now change the standard deviation, then you can see it doesn't change where the peak is, but it lowers the peak if I increase the 
standard deviation. Now what I'd like you to focus on is the two black dots that we have got. And the two black dots represent the points which are one standard deviation away from the mean. And looking at the graph, you can see that the two black dots are also at the steepest parts of the curve. In other words, they're at the points of inflection of the curve. So at this stage, let's just go through again. We can see that changing the value of increasing the value of mu moves the distribution to the right. Increasing the standard deviation increases the spread but reduces the maximum value of the distribution, the maximum height of the distribution. So we've seen that the normal distribution then is bell shaped, whatever the value of mu and sigma. It's always symmetrical about x equals mu. It has points of inflection at the points where x is mu plus the standard deviation and at the point where x is mu minus the standard deviation. And as we commented, the increasing mu while leaving sigma fixed just moves the distribution to the right and increasing the standard deviation while keeping mu fixed has the effect of spreading the curve out but reducing the maximum value of phi of x. Now the slides shown below show a selection of different normal distributions with differing values of the mean and the standard deviation. So here we've got the normal distribution with mean 40 and standard deviation 5 and the two dots on the graph now show the two points which are five standard deviations away from the mean on the normal distribution and we've got the same thing here but for a different normal distribution one with a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 1.8 We've got another one here where we've got a mean of 80 and a standard deviation of 3. And in each case, we need to notice that there is virtually no area beneath the curve to the left of the mean minus 5 standard deviations or to the right of the mean plus 5 standard deviations. So, for any probability, de probability density function for random variable x, where x is normally distributed with mean mu and variance sigma squared, or standard deviation sigma, then we've got the normal curve is bell-shaped, symmetrical about mu, has points of inflection at the points where x equals mu plus sigma and x equals mu minus sigma. And there is virtually no area beneath the curve to the left of mu minus 5 sigma or to the right of mu plus 5 sigma. Now since probabilities are obtained from areas under the normal curve, this means that we can say to a very high degree of accuracy that the probability that x is less than mu minus 5 sigma is 0 and that the probability that x is bigger than mu plus 5 sigma is equal to 0. Now these properties we will find are useful as we proceed in later videos to actually use the normal distribution to obtain probabilities. So that concludes our first look at the normal distribution.